I think there's fundamental flaw in the way we organize around public health. In my capstone, I hope to share perspectives on that flaw in a traditional scientific terms and in the words of people who are actively organizing around health so that we can think about new ways of organizing. Here's what I hope to do in the next 10-15 minutes. I want to tell you how I orient myself to public health. That is my theoretical or sensitizing framework. So I'll talk about the assumptions on which my perspective is based and some of the definitions that we'll be using. Then I'll talk about the literature, evidence, and other significant influences on my perspective. Then I'll tell you how I'm synthesizing all this through the DRPH program and how it informs my ideas about organizing, governing organizations, and leadership, and leads me to a a new definition of vision. Then I'll talk about how I'm going to apply this vision as a leader in a governance process at UAMS and characterize it as a qualitative research project. I'll tell you how this is going to produce something useful at UAMS and and to the people they serve and how it will satisfy the requirements of this DRPH capstone and how how I see it playing out time-wise. Finally, most importantly, I'll ask you for your initial thoughts. What am I missing? Does it all make sense? Or does it make sense at all? And what do you think I need to do next? So first, let me tell you how I got here. Over my 18 years as a burn nurse at Children's Hospital, I had a growing sense that we as a health system were doing more harm than good. I came to the DRPH program for the chance to get a broader perspective on that and learn more about health systems and health system language. I found that a core assumption of public health was that it was considered necessarily opposed to individual freedom. I began to see tangible evidence of this at the health department, College of Public Health, and and at UAMS. All health systems seem to be paternalistic and individuals served by the systems had little or no voice in those systems. This led me to work on a community advisory board where one clinic at UAMS was actually looking to their patients for direction that is how to run the clinic. But before I get to the details of that practical project, I want to talk a little bit more about how I'm approaching the project academically. I think assumptions are important and should be questioned all the time. My capstone is going to challenge some major assumptions of public health and science, so I think it's important to share my assumptions. Here's the major assumptions I'll be working from. People are principles, that is, individuals are irreducible units that we are most concerned about. People are sense makers, that is, people are continually making sense of, orienting themselves to, and engaging their environment. And their environment includes other people who are doing the same thing. People make sense through dialogue with other people. And it's a form of collective action. And then people collaborate to create tools like words, language, science, stories, and ideals to comprise dialogue. And my whole education and this capstone is about the way that people create and use tools. Particularly, we're interested in the ideas of health and public health as tools and the way we organize and use those. This probably sounds too vague and abstract right now, but we're going to come back to these and I think you'll see that they're really elemental and they're pragmatic. And I think the three articles I've chosen to start a discussion with all get at bridging theory and practice. In Eisenhart's review of agency theory, she talks about the development and use of agency theory where human activity is characterized as a relationship between principles, that is people, and agents contracted to work on behalf of those people. It's a pretty simple structure that can help think about the way agents of health relate to people, that is the way we organize to get things done around health. In fact, I'm responding to her call in that paper for scientists to apply agency theory structure to organizing beyond the usual health economic model, which she says is limited. Stoker's article about governance complements this agency theory and helps address some of the problems with the usual application of agency theory. So I want to replace or enhance some of agency theory's problematic assumptions with some of the propositions of Stoker's governance theory. Combined, I think these two theories allow for a pretty comprehensive view of and practical implications for public health. Then, Draith's article describes the need for a new way of approaching leadership in this scheme. 
I'll demonstrate how this builds on leadership theory as presented in the DRPH program and how it helps leaders think about their role in organizing public health. We can talk as much about agency theory as you want in this opening meeting. The relationship between principles and agents is important, but to be relevant, we have to question some of these assumptions that go with this theory, like the human assumptions that humans are self-interested, have bounded rationality, and are risk-averse, and the information assumption that information is a purchasable commodity. We're still kind of heady here, but all these things are important to public health. So governance theory recognizes the capacity to get things done, which doesn't rest on the power of an organization to use its authority. In other words, it proposes that it isn't necessary for a health system to coerce individuals to get health-related things done. It suggests that the power of autonomous networks of actors can resolve some of the power dependence problems inherent in this agent-principal relationship. It's really what Jefferson and Washington and those guys were on to when the country was founded. They visualized a world in which the essential discipline of government was internalized within its citizenry. In public health, we might say a world in which the essential discipline of health is internalized in the public. Now, I know that still sounds lofty, even utopian, but it can't be. And a new complementary take on leadership can help us think about it pragmatically. It helps us think about, okay then, I'm in public health, what's my job, what's my role? How am I supposed to function in this type of system? I think Draith's framework in his call for a new ontology of leadership is a more peer-like, collaborative, what Jefferson might call democratic, form of governance. And I like the way Draith describes the need for a new framework. It's not limited by traditional concepts of leaders, followers, and shared goals, where the leaders become institutionalized, which results in kings, priests, and in health experts who tend to construct and reinforce linear models of health that emphasize efficiency and discount quality. So, to sum up my synthesis of organizing and leadership research, organizing is an essential human activity that requires participatory governance and distributive leadership, else it will result in an organization that is inhumane, that is not run by people, in other words, that is autonomous. In principal agent terms, it's called an autonomous agent. As important as I think the assumptions and theories are, they're useless if they're not applicable to real life, right? So I hope to clarify this perspective on public health by applying it retrospectively to some of the successes of command and control public health in the 20th century. For example, the increased lifespan, decreased infant mortality, and some of the resulting trends that have led to some of the current issues in public health. Then I'll talk about the implications for future leaders of public health practice, as Northridge and friends called for in this January's issue of the American Journal of Public Health, to direct and advance societal efforts that address socially rooted causes of health and illness. I think that's what I'm trying to do with this capstone, and I hope to further illustrate the applicability of this approach by working with a group of people in a real life situation, and that's my capstone project. The newly formed Patient Community Advisory Council for UAMS's Internal Medicine North Clinic offers a chance for me to observe and to play a role in an experiment with patient-centeredness. The Patient Advisory Council is a group of patients and community members working to increase the influence of patients on the ideals and decisions of a health system, that is UAMS. They're operating where individuals and institutions interface. To me, it's an opportunity to enhance my vision of public health by engaging with others to organize and govern a real health system. So through my capstone project, I hope to contribute in a meaningful way to this patient-centered process, this CAB process, and describe that process in the words of the people involved, including myself. Because of my unique approach to leadership and organizing, it's going to be hard for me to formulate my project in conventional terms. Intervention variables, outcome variables, etc. But I believe that with your help and the help of the PCAB, we can design a capstone activity that meets their needs and the expectations of you and the faculty leadership committee. So to me, it seems like there's two main tasks that I have in this capstone project. One is to develop and describe my perspective on the history and the role of public health and on the importance of understanding how a patient community advisory board works and to provide some kind of service to the community advisory board clinic partnership that helps them reach their goals. 
that can be done in 18 months or less and that meets the requirements of the capstone project. So I've given this brief overview without embedding many references, but I have a lot of supporting evidence and, and literature. Today, I need you to tell me what you think. Am I ready to do this capstone? What am I missing? Where should I start? I feel like I've been working on this alone for a long time, which means there's going to be a lot of things that make, a, that make sense to me, but not to anyone else. But I think this capstone process is about communicating my way out of this isolation and making sense of my role in public health, and I appreciate you being a part of that.